Dr. Swapnil Prabhulkar have come with the same tagline, simplicity at its best. Friends, I always come with new and new stuff on my channel so that you will enjoy the channel. In this video, I have come with the scientific topic that is going to tell us about the stability of atomic nucleus. Now you will say that what is new? Yes, friends, definitely it's the new video. And in this, we are going to see what will happen to the stability of nucleus if neutron to proton ratio is lower. Wait, wait, wait. Haven't you subscribed the channel yet? Hit that subscribe button and subscribe the channel immediately and hit that bell icon so that immediately you will come to know whenever I'll publish a new video. Now friends, coming back to the stability of nucleus, uh, we have seen that there is one more possibility that if neutron to proton ratio is lower, we can have the positron emission. Is there any another way to find out to have this neutron to proton ratio higher or uh, to increase the neutron to proton ratio to attain the stability for the nucleus? That is the orbital electron capture that is also known as K electron capture. Now, what is this K electron capture? See, when we say that your atomic nucleus is in unstable state, what do we have? We have say some kind of nucleus which is some kind of atom which is having an atomic number and has atomic weight one possibility that is that see the first possibility was beta emission that is beta plus emission that is the positron emission second possibility is what the k electron capture or orbital electron capture what is the meaning of this the electron from the nearest orbit that is the k shell is captured by the nucleus or the protons so in this case what happens your proton captures that electron just think what will happen this gets converted into a neutron and the neutral particles neutrino with zero charge zero mass are given out neutrinos which are having zero charge and zero mass that are given out okay now let's let us see what exactly is happening in this case proton having one charge that is positive plus one charge positive charge it is having atomic mass of one atomic mass unit so we can write that as one if it is capturing electron what are the interactions taking place your electrons are having one negative charge so one plus charge of proton is decreased or rather say cancelled by one negative charge of the electron so the charge on the resulting particle is zero right just think of you have proton which is having mass one atomic mass unit and electron which is having negligible mass they are combining one plus zero mass will remain same so which is that particle which is having zero charge and one mass simple neutron so it is how the number of neutrons are increased number of protons are decreased neutron to proton ratio has proton in the denominator and therefore the n by p value of the atomic nucleus is increased and nucleus may attain the stability let us see how exactly this takes place so friends what do we have we can have proton which is having one plus charge one atomic mass unit as the mass when this captures the electron which is having minus one charge and negligible mass and it is going to give us one minus one zero charge one plus zero one mass and such particle is neutron this will happen at the cost of the release of neutrinos okay now let us see what will happen see what do we want we want n by p ratio to be increased see let us see whether n by p ratio is increased here or not P is which is in the denominator yes P if you think of during this conversion you don't have anything like proton at the on the right hand side so the denominator value of denominator is decreased has the neutron form yes so value of numerator is increased and this is how your neutron to proton ratio is increased and this has taken place by orbital electron capture or K electron capture okay now let us see why this actually take place 
friends unstable nucleus can be identified by different number of different mass number right so here also we we'll, we are going to find that if there is something different than the stable atomic mass we can identify that our nucleus is unstable and it requires some nuclear change to attain the stability now what will happen after this once this electron this orbital electron is captured what will happen orbitals are what they are nothing but the energy levels right now when one electron has dropped down into the nucleus and that space remains empty just now i have said orbitals are nothing but the energy levels so what will happen that energy that is energy is the characteristic energy of that particular atom and when that electron has dropped down electron is a particle that has dropped down to the lower energy the energy of that particular orbital is released out and that released energy is x radiations is that is released out in the form of x radiation so due to this release in energy again the nucleus attains stability because decrease in energy leads to the increase in stability right let us see some example for this so that we can understand exactly what happens with particular unstable nucleus to get it stabilized by k electron capture say for example we have an unstable nucleus of beryllium what is the atomic number of beryllium it is 4 but when it is radioactive when it is unstable say it is having atomic mass 7 what will happen it will see look at the neutron to proton ratio so n by p value for this particular will be number of protons is what 4 number of neutrons will be 7 minus 4 so it will be 3 upon 4 so it will be equal to 0.7500 what will happen this beryllium will capture the electron which is having minus 1 charge and zero mass what will happen now we need not write this neutron because the nuclear changes are going to take place 4 minus 1 it will give you 3 which is the atomic number 3 atomic number 3 element is our lithium 7 plus 0 it is going to remain same 7 by 3 let us see what will be the ratio n by p ratio of this number of protons is 3 so denominator is 3 7 minus 3 number of neutron is 4 so 4 upon 3 will be equal to it is 1.3333 has it increased yes the n by p ratio which was initially 0.7500 has increased to 1.3333 we will believe whether this is stable or not see friends why this is stable because the stable lithium will be having the atomic number 3 and atomic mass of 6.9390 so it, which can be safely taken as 7 was that the case for beryllium no the stable beryllium has or must have the atomic mass of 9.102 which is not here yes it is a lighter isotope of beryllium and therefore this is unstable and it is giving you stability and obviously the emission of neutrinos will take place okay so this is a first example we'll take one more example of this kind if we have an unstable potassium okay atomic number of potassium is what it is 19 and which is having the mass 40 so this is the unstable isotope of potassium so what will be the n by p ratio let us see 19 is the number of protons 40 minus 19 becomes 21 which is the number of neutrons and the ratio comes to be 
1.1053. Okay, this radioactive or unstable potassium will capture electron having minus one charge, zero mass, and will give. Let us see. 19 minus 1, 18. 18 is the atomic number of what? It is the atomic number of argon. 40 plus 0, it will remain as it is. Right? Let us see what has happened to the neutron to proton ratio in this case. Denominator is 18 and 40 minus 18, that is 22. So the value comes to be 1.2. Two, 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 two. Has it increased? Yes. It has increased from 1.1053 to 1.2222. Right? Can we take this as a stable atom? Let us see. The stable argon, which is having 18 as atomic number, has atomic mass of 39.9480. So safely we can take this as 40. Right? And therefore, your argon is stable, no doubt. Was our potassium stable with 40? No, it was unstable. Why were we are calling this as unstable? Because the stable potassium must have the atomic mass of 39.102. That means around 39, which is uh, one atomic mass unit extra in this case. And therefore, it was unstable. Okay. So, neutron to proton ratio has increased. It has attained the stability by or vital electron capture or K electron capture. So friends, we must understand when actually this particular change will take place. We must have, we must know how much amount of energy the nucleus has. Say so if the energy is lower than 1.02 million electron volts, then this K electron capture or orbital electron capture take place, right? What will happen if the energy is sufficiently higher? Yes, if the energy is sufficiently higher, the process may take place in two ways. It may either go by positron emission or again electron capture, right? So let us see how that will take place if the energy is higher than, the nuclear energy is higher than 1.02 million electron volts. Which type of emissions will take place? Whether K electron capture is possible or not? or whether the positron emission is possible or not. Yes, definitely both are possible. And let us see how this can be understood by an example. So friends, what is the another possibility? Another possibility is if the difference in the energy, mass of the parent and daughter nuclei is equivalent to more than the required energy of 1.02 million electron volts. So then there is the possibility of combination of positron emission and beta electro, uh, this uh, uh, K electron capture. Okay. So let us see, for example, so if you have an unstable vanadium nucleus, vanadium isotope, vanadium is what? It is having the atomic number 23. You can uh, take out this, all these atomic numbers from one of my previous videos where I have told you how to remember these atomic numbers, which has this vanadium, which has isotope has atomic number say 48 or mass 48 atomic mass 48 not the number mass 48 if it undergoes positron emission so i'll write this as minus beta particle beta positive beta particle if it undergoes positron emission so what is the possibility due to this positron emission the atomic number will decrease to 22 22nd element is what? It is titanium and positron emission will not lead to the mass change. So it will be same. Because what is positron? Positron is nothing but the positively charged electron. So mass change will not be there. Only the nuclear charge will be changed. As for one positive charge is decreased, so 23 becomes 22. Let us see what will happen to the neutron to proton ratios of these n by p values 23 is the number of protons for this and 48 minus 23 will be 25 
and therefore n by p value for this vanadium isotope having mass 48 will be equal to 1.0870 okay now what will happen to this here proton number of protons is 22 48 minus 22 will be the number of neutrons so it will be 2 8 minus 2 6 equal to equal to 1.18182 let us see has it increased or not yes it has increased from 1.0870 to 1 1.18182 yes what is the another possibility your another possibility is you have vanadium isotope unstable and that is going to capture the electron which is having minus one charge negligible mass and this will give 23 minus 1 22 again the same element is obtained that is titanium no change in the mass 48 and obviously the changes will be same okay now among these let us see whether the stable nucleus is formed or not okay was this vanadium stable no because the stable vanadium having atomic number 23 has the mass of 51 that is actually around 50.942 so we can safely take it as 51 but it is lesser okay and what about titanium whether the stable titanium has atomic mass 48 let us see titanium 22 has atomic mass of 47.90 so definitely it can be safely taken as 48 and therefore this has reached to the stability and this has reached stability by either positron emission or k electron capture now friends you will ask that so why these nucleus do such several processes to get stabilized what is what do you want this nucleus want to get neutron to proton ratio uh, increased so simply decrease the number of protons and increase the neutron to proton ratio is it possible yes it's possible it's not impossibility but it is very difficult it is un it is not possible unless and until your nucleus is having very very high energy of more than 8 ele million electron volt 8 million electron volts so if you have nucleus of energy more than 8 million electron volts then it is possible that neutron this nucleus will throw off the proton outside and it will attain the it will increase the neutron to proton ratio so friends you must have simply understood so you must have clearly understood about why the stability of atomic nucleus can be achieved by orbital electron capture what does that mean the nearest electron the orbit uh, the electron from the nearest orbit is captured by the proton that itself gets converted into neutron by the release of neutrinos energy is released in the form of x radiations and your nucleus attains stability yes proton emission is not easier hope you have understood all these things so friends if you have liked the video hit that like button share the video to all so that they also will understand these nuclear transitions taking place to attain the stability so friends we'll meet in the next video